Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today is Sunday, so you know what that means. We're going around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have a lot to get to. We will do a quick update on M1, as many of us do have accounts, especially from the second channel. We have two airline stories. We're going to talk Alaska again and United, but it's actually pretty good, and a plane did not break this time, so uh, improvement. And of course, the Wells Fargo Autograph Journey card is out. I managed to get denied twice in like 10 minutes, so I could be a funny story to end on, so we'll talk about that as well to close this out. So, of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. Now, we will bat lead off with M1 Finance. Again, we've talked about the M1 Owner's Rewards card here before, although I don't think I ever refreshed that video, so uh, maybe I should do that now. You can let me know if you're interested in that. Um, but anyways, many of us have M1 Brokerage accounts from the second channel, run on the bank because they do generally do have decent promotional offers. Well, M1 is now charging a monthly fee as where before there was no monthly fee, but they did have a paid tier. So the paid tier is going away, kind of, and uh, now they'll have a monthly fee. So this is the email that they sent me. And we'll read it for you. Um, so M1 is about to get even better, Ryan. Well, this is exciting because I have an explanation point. Um, we've decided to end our M1 Plus membership program. Our premium features will no longer require membership and will instead be available to everyone who builds and manages their wealth on M1. Sounds amazing. But wait, there's another paragraph. Let's read on. Starting May 15th, a $3 monthly platform fee will apply to clients with less than ten grand in M1 assets or without an active personal loan. Each billing cycle will last 30 days. Meeting platform requirements at least one day during the cycle will ensure that it is waived. And again, uh, they just go on to say, based on my account, I would uh, have to pay three bucks. I keep $100 over there in that account because to do the referral program, the account does have to be funded. And $100 seems to be the number that they need, even though technically a dollar should work. So, um, you know, it's more of a heads up than anything else. Myself, I will keep the account because of referrals. I think I've done 7,700 in M1 referrals already. That was basically my full Roth contribution this year already came from just M1 referrals. But they did have a 250 and 250 offer that was pretty good. Now it's down to 100, which is the standard offer. So who's to know if we'll ever see the 250 again? Still a good offer. Um, you know, I, I assume just they weren't getting a lot of signups for the M1 premium membership, so they probably ran the numbers and it made more sense just to give these features out, maybe attract more people, and then you know, also get people to build up their balance. Ten grand is just so much to avoid fees when there's so many free brokerages out there with their own competing services and things like that. So um interesting, interesting choice, I guess. But uh, there you go, just kind of be aware of it. Now we will have two airline stories for you next, and we will start with Alaska. Now, we did a lot on Alaska last week because Alaska had announced a new partnership with Bill Rewards, and that was overall a pretty good partnership. Now, Alaska is back, pushing it even further this time with their own, not necessarily loyalty program, but a membership program, I guess, on top of Alaska's loyalty program that they probably have. This is called Alaska Access, and for $5 per month, here's what you could get. And here you have, again, this promo material uh Three things, really. So it's a $5 per month with a 12-month commitment. So you're basically signing up for a year. Um, score early sale accesses, a personalized fare package, and Wi-Fi in the sky. So it's a Wi-Fi voucher you get. Um, they'll email you one Wi-Fi voucher per month. You know, uh, so cool, I guess. Early access to sales. And then personalized fair page, get the best seat for the best price with any with an easier member only way to view deals. Don't know what that access page is going to look like. I don't I mean regular airline pages aren't technically that hard to read, uh, but OK, sure. Um, you know, I think it's just a, it just seems weird. Like I don't, it doesn't go far enough, like to get a Wi-Fi voucher per month for five bucks. I think Wi-Fi costs like eight bucks on Alaska or something. That's just one way. I think maybe if they were giving you, you know, Wi-Fi for round trip, okay, maybe. Uh, but the rest of it, I just don't see being worth five bucks early access to sales. Most people here are, you know, interested in using miles and stuff. Anyways, I don't know if they have like points. They would if they included points transfer bonuses and boosts in it. I think they could maybe convince some of people here, especially with the partnership with Built, where you'll be able to, whenever they announce this part of the promotion or, or activate it, you'll be able to earn, you know, Alaska miles, which is fairly hard to earn because you can only really get them through the Alaska a card there's not really like the you know how chase ultimate rewards can make it really easy to earn hyatt or marriott or hilton points right so it's a little bit harder to earn alaska points so 
I think they need more of a tie-in with that, but again, this is just kind of directed at the masses. I just don't think it does far enough, but if you have $5 and you'd like to burn, well, again, we do have channel memberships that, wouldn't you know, it, are $5 a month, but, uh, you know, you can cancel anytime. You have to lock in for a year, and uh, you also do get your referral links featured in videos and blog posts, primarily on the other channel, ProfitableContent.com, and, of course, we self-refer each other. That's probably a better use of your $5, I would say. Join button will tell you more down below. Enough for shameless plugs. Let's keep it moving. The next airline we have is United. Now, United has an interesting new feature that they've announced, which is called points pooling, which is not exactly an uncommon thing. I think other folks have said we've seen it on Aeroplan before, but Aeroplan ended up ending it as they had issues with fraud and, and whatnot, as you can imagine, people try to take advantage of things. Uh, but overall, it is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to form pools or groups of people like ProfitableContent.com's group of, you know, channel members. I mean, we don't really do that over there. But anyways, um, you know, and, and just pool your points together. So the official press release or what you can actually do, they list out a few things. So pool leaders can invite up to four of their family, friends, or close travel companions of any age to join the pool if they have an active Mileage Plus account. There is no minimum age to join Mileage Plus, which is nice. I will log into their Mileage Plus account on United.com. Members will be instructed on how to contribute miles to the group pool, as well as how to redeem pool miles for award flights on United and United Express. There are no limits to the number of miles that may be contributed to an active miles pool. Pool miles can be used when booking a ticket on United.com or United Mobile app. I don't know that it works on partner airlines. And I think there is to, to prevent like people from jumping from pool to pool to pool, all you popular people out there who would know that many people. Uh, there's like a 90-day cool-off period before like if you leave a pool, you can't join another one for 90 days. And I, don't, I think you, it takes 90 days once a pool is formed to add someone else. I think that's how that works. Um, again, some will have to try it to be sure. I think this is a fantastic idea, um, probably aimed at the everyman common traveler, right? Because, uh, you know, it, it also, once again, I believe they're looking for ways to push the credit card. So now it's, you know, much more advantageous or la that much more advantageous for, you know, mom and dad, player one, player two, whatever, to have United cards, even people within the family, you know, uh, you know, cousins, whoever you travel with, whatever, to have United cards earn points join a pool and then you can you know pool combined to like your once a year family vacation or what have you it also lets the person who cares the most could be in charge right because usually the people i talk to who have player ones and twos even threes and fours they don't bring in their kids or whatnot there's usually only one person who really cares about miles and points enough to like do the research and see what's a good redemption what's not how to use them and that person could be in charge of the pool so i think it's a fantastic idea uh, really, it's not like, a, I wouldn't say it's like a game changer or anything, but I think it just makes life easier because, again, I still contend that most people simply just don't want to pay cash uh, when they fly. That's kind of, kind of fine. I fall into that bucket as well. Now, a lot of people who are like points warriors and stuff, uh, you know, it could make life easier, sure, because then the people could just give you their points and you could handle it. But, you know, I, I don't think you're going to like have found this revolutionary thing. So, um, you know, what's left to see is do the other airlines copy this as well? Uh, you know, America doesn't, it seems to just do whatever they want. I can see Delta doing it perhaps, but again, I think it's just more so aimed at getting more cards in hands and further lock-in, which is what everyone's trying to do. So I think that's fine. So let me know if you uh, would do this yourself. Now, last story is more so just for fun. Uh, we did talk about the, we had all the details the previous week of the Wells Fargo autograph journey. Uh, that, uh, that was published probably Wells Fargo had given it to Business Insider. So we knew about the card, but it's officially out. It came out on the 20th for actual application online. Uh, so we can put it on screen for you. So a few thoughts and then a story, parting thoughts, if you will. So everything does check out. You know, the questions were like, hey, is it going to be 5X hotels and 4X airlines booked, you know, through the portal? It seems like you can book those directly. There is no primary CDW, as we noted. That's probably its only insurance gap, I would say. And then that $50 annual statement credit with uh, $50 airline purchases, it does look like uh, that that's going to, again, renew you know, the following year when you when you pay your annual fee, but you do get access to it right away, it seems, which is also nice, and it seems like you can use it directly as well um, so overall I mean, again i think this is a good card i stand by that um i think the thing to take away is one someone pointed this out to me in the comments is people's opinion of it i'll call it a first look because the card you can't review a card until it's officially out now we could do an official review and I'm, i still might 
uh, it, it, your opinion kind of went by what type of travel and what type of credit cards do you like. So folks who favored cards that are more expensive seem to be like, meh, it's not that special. And I would see why they would say that. But the people like me who don't care for annual fees and don't care for coupons and all this nonsense thought it was an amazing card. And the thing that kind of stuck with me after the fact is that if Chase had done this, we'd lose our collective minds. Like if they painted this thing from like red to blue and this was the new version of the Sapphire Preferred, I think we'd lose our minds. And though I still stand by it being a good card, now, I did apply for it as soon as it came out. I was denied. Very sad, I know. Um, so I called in. Uh, one of my channel members actually found me the recon, the, the, the phone number for uh, Wells Fargo Recon. Called in. It's funny. They'll send you an email, and then it gives you the application number. Of course, it's not going to tell you the reason they denied. So you call in. You talk to a person. The person's like, I can't tell you the reason. But if you go through the computer and give them the computer your application number, it will tell you the reason you were denied, which is interesting. Um, but okay, sure. Thank you, computer overlord. I was denied for too many inquiries. I've had, I've gotten six cards in the first quarter of this year, and technically there's still a week left, so we could do some more damage. Uh, so like that makes sense. But when you go through Wells Recon, they just kind of ask you to give more context as to your denial reason, but they won't tell you your denial reason, which is kind of funny. I guess they mean for you to call after the letter comes. Uh, and the guy, he was nice. He kept trying to say, like, so do you agree with the denial reason? And I was like, well, I'm not going to document me saying I'd agree with the denial reason. So we went back and forth on that, playing the game of words. And, you know, I think I can see this. Like, I understand how a computer underwriting algorithm would come to this conclusion, but I'm not going to say I agree with it. Finally, he conceded, shipped it off to re-review, back office, whatever. And then like 10 minutes later, he's like, it'll take three days. Like 10 minutes later, I got another denial email. So technically, I guess I was denied twice. I, I really didn't think I had a shot to try to explain away all those inquiries. I mean, even if you try to make something up, you know, the inquiry says like, you know, Wells Fargo card services. So they can tell like your, their credit cards and not like for a mortgage or auto loan shopping. They all say different things. So didn't really have a shot there. Gave it a shot, though. I still think it's a good card. We'll break down the bonus offer on the second channel, I think, coming up either this week or next. But overall, that's my story applying. I will probably try again later. Again, 600 bucks is just, you know, the launch offer is usually the highest offer. I still think this is a good card. I think it's uh, I think it's probably a really good card for people who prefer to, again, travel conveniently, simply, and probably more cash back travelers because you can justify $50 uh, with that airline credit after the fact for just, you know, having travel insurances and stuff. And normally I don't do comparison videos, but I might do a comparison on the ecosystems of Chase, City, and Wells Fargo. I leave MX alone because, again, as I said, Amex is trying to do something totally different. But I do think this is a much better card, more tempting offering. Maybe not for people who are already embedded in an ecosystem. But yeah, I can see that. If you have like 15 Freedom cards, you probably, they know, it's probably easier to stay. But... I do think there's a world where this card catches on and a, and a target demo for it. Plus, I do think Wells will also release a Sapphire Reserve uh, competitor at some point. It just makes sense. Even Bank of America, who doesn't, who I like, but Bank of America doesn't even care, has the Travel Elite card, which is not very good. But even they have it because they know, well, 550 is the number. How hard is it to make another card? So, anyways, that's my Wells Fargo autograph story. Look for the bonus uh, video on Run on the Bank either this week or next. I think it's worth picking up. And as we say over there, it's an Avenge Me scenario. So if you do get in, uh, go ahead and Avenge Me. I would appreciate that. But anyways, guys, that has been the news for this week. So of course, if you liked it, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing subscribe to the channel we're posting content just like this every single week and of course right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance and as we said every single day over on profitablecontent.com that is the channel's blog we not only have the latest news stories just like all the autograph news we have uh, bank promotions as well so Wells Fargo has checking account offers you should take those as well and credit cards. So if you do get denied, we have fallback options. And if you want even more cards, well, we have options for those as well, too. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you very soon this week.